Hi everyone. In this video, I want to go over what to do if you have an unrelated histories error in Git. Okay, so I'm going to recreate this problem by taking a look at this example repository. Okay, so this example repository, okay, uh, I've just accepted it as part of GitHub Classroom uh, and it has some starter code. That part doesn't really matter. What matters is you have a GitHub repository, okay, that has at least one commit. Okay, that's what's important. So here I've got a GitHub repository and it has one commit, right, which has the label the first commit. Okay, so that means since this repository already has a commit, it has a history of commits, right? Just think about the history as the sequence of commits in sequential order, right? So it already has its own history, okay? So whether you're working with GitHub Classroom or you just have some repository, maybe you initialized it with a readme, maybe you forked it from some other repository, maybe you, uh, you know, you manually uploaded files using the GitHub web browser, okay? Somehow you've got this repository and it's got a commit in it, which means it's got some files in it. Now let's say you head over to your development environment and you run git init in a folder in order to create a local repository, okay? You make some changes in there, you add a commit, okay? Now you're like, oh, okay, I want to push, you know, this commit, I wanna push these changes in this local repository up into this remote repository. Well, guess what? GitHub uh, is gonna reject that, okay? Git's gonna give you a message and say, we can't do this because you've got a different commit history in this local repository than this remote repository has, okay? The commits, right, their IDs, their hashes, they don't line up, okay? So let's go through and recreate this problem and I'll show you two ways you can resolve it. One is kind of the, um, the quick and dirty way and the other one's kind of the longer, more brute force way. All right, so I'm gonna copy this URL, okay? And I'm gonna git clone so that I have a copy of this remote repo locally on my machine, okay? It's right here. What I should do is cd into this directory, start changing the files, and then do add commit push. That's what I should do, okay? That's not what I'm gonna do. Instead, I'm going to make a directory, I'll call it um, PA3. And I'm going to cd into PA3, and I'm going to make, let's say, my own main.cpp, okay? Because look, here's a main.cpp. It's part of this commit, the first commit, okay? So it has a different history of commits and changes for this file, okay? I'm going to make my own in PA3, my own main.cpp, so it's going to be a different one than the one in the actual local repository that's a copy of this remote repository. All right, so let's gedit main.cpp to open it up in a text editor. Okay, I'm gonna pound include IO stream. Just kind of putting in some boilerplate code here. Maybe I'll say something like starting my programming assignment number three. Okay, no, I'm not realizing that I should be doing it in that PA3-Gsprint23 folder, right, which is a copy, a local copy of this repository. It has the same commit history as this one, and that's really where I should be modifying main.cpp, but I decided to just do my own thing in a different folder, and I'm gonna try to push this main.cpp to overwrite this main.cpp, okay? It's pretty empty as well. So I'm gonna try to overwrite this one. It's not gonna work. All right, so I've saved this file. I'm like, okay, I want to push this file uh, to GitHub, and overwrite this one. Okay, so I've gotta make this be a Git repository. So I run git init. Okay, so that's going to create this .git special directory here that's hidden. Okay. Now I'm gonna do git add, I'm gonna add main, I'm gonna do git commit, and I'm gonna call this um, uh, my main.cpp first commit, okay, right? So this local repository now has a completely different commit history than this one, right? This one has one commit, 
called the first commit. This one has one commit called my main.cbp first commit. Okay, we've got unrelated histories here. All right, now in order to push to that remote, I gotta do git remote add origin. I think I still have that, yep, on my, on my clipboard. I'm gonna paste that URL. Great, now I'm gonna try and push this commit with a change in main.cpp, I'm gonna try and push it up into this repository, okay? So I run this and oh no, I have an error, okay? Here it says updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you, uh, let's kind of make this a little bit bigger. All right, here we go. Um, so updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. This is usually caused by another repository pushing to the same ref reference. You may want to first integrate the remote changes, get pulled before pushing again. Okay. The remote contains work that you do not have locally. Okay. So I've got some unrelated histories here. So here's what I need to do. Okay. I actually need to do a get pull first in order to try and get this local repository to have the same history as this one before I try and update with my new history, my new commit. Okay, so I'm gonna say, okay, git pull. Okay, so what happens here, it says there's no tracking information for the current branch. Oh, that's fine. Uh, git pull origin master. Okay. Now it says refusing to merge unrelated histories. Okay, so I couldn't push my local commit because this repository didn't have this commit, right? It was behind, so to speak. And now when I try to pull this commit down into my local one, it's saying, I don't know how to do this because I've got two different sequences of commits and they don't line up, okay? So right here, this is the ultimate error that I'm trying to help you resolve, but you may have seen it after you, you know, saw this rejection up here and didn't really know what to do with it. All right, so we try to pull, complains. Okay, so here's what we need to do. Here's what we need to do. We need to run uh, a command in order to brute force merge these histories, okay? So this is the second option I mentioned earlier. Okay, before we do that, which I would say this is the preferred way to go, let me show you the first option I mentioned earlier, which is kind of the shortcut, okay? The quick and dirty way to fix this. I'm not endorsing it as a solution. I'm just saying it is a solution, okay? Okay, you've got unrelated histories up here. You might be like, I don't even want any of these files, okay? I just wanna start with my local repository. Everything I need is right here. Okay, so this, I'm not endorsing this as an option. I'm just saying it is an option. You could actually just delete this repository and then remake it and make sure that when you remake it, you don't check that box that says add a readme or you're not copying it from some GitHub classroom assignment that has starter code, right? Okay, so if you can do that, you can actually remake this repository and make it empty, then here is an option. Go to settings. Go down here and click delete this repository. Okay, I'm not, I'm not recommending this, I'm just saying it's an option. If you don't have admin privileges to your repositories, maybe because you are, um, you know, you're pushing to repositories in, you know, an organization that you're not an admin of, right? For like, say GitHub Classroom, right? Your instructor may not allow you to have admin privileges to your repositories which means you won't see this delete button, okay? So if you don't see this delete button, don't panic. It just means you don't have the admin privileges to delete your repository anyways, okay? So if I delete this, okay, this one's gone, I could recreate it, right, and make sure it's empty, okay? Make sure it's empty. That isn't an option for this case because this is actually a GitHub Classroom created repository and the assignment for GitHub Classroom has starter code, okay? So every time I say delete this and then re-accept the assignment, have this repository made, it's always gonna have these files with this one commit, commit history in it, okay? So 
Sometimes that works just to say like, I just want to start over, get rid of this GitHub repo, make a new one that's empty. That way it has no commit history and I can push to it. Okay. That's one option, not the one I recommend, but that's the quick and dirty way if you can do it. All right. Option two, as I alluded to, we need to pull again, but this time we need to let Git know, Hey, I know these have unrelated histories. I just, I force you to just try to merge them together. Okay. Try to merge them together. So now I'm going to do git pull origin master dash dash allow dash unrelated dash histories. Okay. So it's a little command that you can add on the end of your poll in order to force these two different commit histories to be merged, right? It's saying refusing to merge, but I'm saying do it anyways. That's essentially what that little flag there means. Okay, so here's what the output I get now. It says um, conflict, merge conflict in main.cpp, automatic merge failed, fix conflicts, and then commit the result. Okay, if you've never worked with a merge conflict before, this is your first one, okay? So what happens is if GitHub tries to merge changes in a file, but they are changes related to the same lines, then it's not gonna be able to automatically merge them and it's going to insert some markers where it couldn't figure out how to merge and then ask you, you know, the, the knowledge expert to go in there and figure out which line should have what. Okay, it's a very manual process and we're gonna do it. So this is gonna list all of the files that have merge conflicts. I only have one, which makes sense, right? I only changed this one file and this one file happens to match with one file up here. So it's main.cpp. You might have multiple. I only have this one. All right, so I'm going to open up main.cpp on my local repository, okay? I can open it up in gedit or vim or some editor, okay? I'll go back to gedit. Look, it says it's been modified. I'm gonna reload it, okay? And now you can see that this file kind of looks like a hybrid between what I wrote locally and what is stored in this main.cpp on the server, on the remote, okay? So Git said I can't merge these, so it inserted some comments for me to manually merge them, okay? So from uh, this line with all of these um, less than signs to this line with all the equal signs, okay? So this is what is local, okay? After this, until all the greater than signs, this is what is on the remote, right? This is the unique identifier for the server, okay? Or excuse me, not the server. Um, the unique identifier for the commit on the server, right? I could actually go look up uh, this one here and see the same one on the server, BE7D530, right? All right, so from here to here, this is what's on the server. Here to here, this, this is what's uh, local. So I've got to manually delete lines in order to make main.cpp look as I want it to look, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, fine, yeah, I probably should include this header file. Uh, okay, so I'm going to actually just take my C out statement, which is the only thing I really want, and I'm going to insert it uh, right here and I'm gonna delete everything else that was inserted by Git when the merge conflict occurred. Okay, so yours is gonna be different, right? You've gotta, you've gotta look, you've gotta think, you've gotta decide what do I want to delete and then make sure that this file, when you're done deleting lines, doesn't contain any of that stuff that Git inserted and it contains what you want merging your local copy and your remote copy. All right, so this is called you know, handling a merge conflict, resolving a merge conflict. So when you're done, go ahead and save it, okay? So it says fix conflicts, we just did, and then commit the result. So now I need to add main.cpp. I need to commit and say fix merge conflict main.cpp, something like this, okay? So now I'm gonna try to push again. Now I'm gonna to try to push again. And remember this all started way up here when I went to try and push and I couldn't, okay? So then we tried to pull, okay? And we couldn't, right? 
then we said, let's force pull with allow unrelated histories. We did that made merge conflicts. We fixed the merge conflicts. Now we've made another commit with the, the fixed merge conflict. And now we're ready to try pushing again. Okay, so this goes through now this time because we have related histories, right? We have the changes that were up here merged with the changes down here. Then we've committed our most recent change and that's what we just pushed. So let me go back here, refresh this page. All right, there's main.cpp with that last commit. Okay, fix merge conflict main.cpp. I'll click on it and there's my merged file. Okay, now if I go to history, I'm gonna see there's actually three commits for main.cpp, right? So here's the, the original one that was unrelated to my local one, my main.cpp first commit. And then here's the merge conflict, which essentially merged these two changes. So I had one consistent history between my remote repository and my local repository here. Okay, so I know that that was a lot in order to go through and fix that. And sometimes with Git, you know, it is a lot, right? It's a powerful tool and it's very easy to mess something up. It happens all the time. I mess things up with it all the time. You know, I have to Google and figure out how to fix it. Uh, so hopefully this helps you if you tried to, you know, Google maybe this original error you had up here in the red and orange, or maybe the one you had, uh, where was it, right here. Okay, so hopefully this helped explain a little bit about why you got this error and how to fix it. So in the future, it's best to try and just prevent this error. And if you have a repository that has code in it already, okay, do what I did at the beginning. I said, this is what we want to do. Okay, let me close this, right? I ran git clone and I copied that down locally. That's what you want to do, okay? And then you CD into this directory and you start making your changes to main.cpp, et cetera, okay? Because then you're copying down this history and you're not trying to merge two different like dot .git folders or two different, you know, histories of your local versus your remote, et cetera. Okay, so what I did here was what you shouldn't do. You can prevent having to do all of this work if you do git clone on a non-empty repository instead of git init on a local repository and then try to push up with that unrelated history locally to the remote repo. All right, well, thanks for watching, and I hope that provided some clarity on an error you might be having in Git and GitHub.